Take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 14. Find your place in Proverbs chapter number 14 and verse number 4. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Let's read it together, verse number 4, together. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increase is by the strength of the ox. Heavenly Father, speak to us by your word. Encourage me as I preach. I need this message just as bad as anybody else. Lord, I pray you write these principles from your word upon our hearts tonight. May we not even begin to be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let us be steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that our labor is not in vain in the Lord. Help us to work till you come. Be found faithful in what you've given us to do when you come. Help us to not become petty and indifferent and apathetic and carnal in the work. But to keep our eyes on you. Realizing what we do is for you and for your glory and not for others. Help us, Lord Jesus. Stir our hearts to do more in 2000. And 24. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Brother Brady Rochester just posted on Facebook before we got in the service. Do more for Jesus in 2024. I said glory to God. I hope that's your heart. I want to do more for Jesus in 2024. I only want to do more. I want to be better. And in my being better for him, I think I'll do more for him. And I hope that's your desire. I hope that's Our desire as a church. I have not lost my mind. At least I haven't been told that I have. I've realized I've preached this text before here. And I will continue if the Lord will give me grace and help to continue to preach this text every single year. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. We all labor under unrealistic expectations. We all serve under unrealistic expectations. We all get into the work of the Lord, if you're in it. You got in it probably with unrealistic expectations. You thought you were entering the gravy train and soon found out that was unrealistic. It's hard work. There's problems. There's frustrations. Nobody realizes what you're doing. Nobody pats you on your back. And you do things that nobody notices. And there's more frustrations and more troubles and more issues than you ever would have imagined. Oh, great. Many times people want to serve the Lord, but they serve the Lord under under unrealistic expectations. They think that it's going to be one way when it's really not that way. I don't know about anybody else that's ever preached a message before or taught a Sunday school class. But maybe I'm fooling myself. Many times I think I did a lot better than what people responded. Sometimes I think I'm doing a better job, but in our flesh we think about ourselves more highly than we ought to think. And we get frustrated and many times as I pray, we ought not, but we get weary in well-doing. But that's because we have unrealistic expectations. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. You might have just seen this for the first time, or really, you've read it, but you've never really thought about it. Well, let's think about it a little bit. First of all, with the principle. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. The principle. Well, you don't have an ox. You're going to have a clean crib. If you don't have an animal, you're not going to have any of the mess that comes along with an animal. 
Okay, that sounds good. We won't get an ox, right? No ox? Clean crib means I don't have to clean nothing up. Say amen, right? Everybody getting there? Everybody about there already? Or do they say that all push rewind, you know? Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. Okay. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. Yeah, you got a clean crib, but you don't have any increase because you don't have an ox. Where there is oxen, there will be a need for cleaning. If we have the ox, we have the power and the strength to get the job done. We have the harvest that we need for survival and for profit. But no one wants the ox. Everyone wants the increase, but no one wants the ox. Because nobody wants to deal with the mess the ox brings. You don't want to deal with the dirty crib. You don't want to deal with the dirty stall. If you don't want any problems, just shoot the ox with your 9 millimeter and bury it. And you won't have any increase either. You won't have anything to show, show for it. Just go ahead. Be sorry and be lazy. And not pay the price to do the work. You won't have anything to show for. That's the principle. The message is keep the ox. And clean the crib. Keep the ox. And clean the crib. Okay, you could say, well, I don't want the ox, okay? You don't have to deal with the everyday maintenance of cleaning the crib, but you won't have a harvest and you'll go hungry. And you won't have any pro profit. My wife, the other day, I've been around the house a little bit more than normal. I'm about to go stir crazy, y'all. Y'all pray for me. It's been, it's been so good to be around the family and the kids, and we've just... We've just done the most frivolous things and just done things together. It's been such a joy. I have enjoyed it, but I am about to go stir crazy. The other day I walk outside, April's got, uh, April's got two wheelbarrows. She's got, she's got one. She's in the backyard in between the swimming pool and the back porch, and she's got a wheelbarrow like this and a wheel, wheelbarrow on top of it. She's turned it upside down like this, and she's, pushing this thing both tires are flat and she's trying to get this over somewhere I'm like what are you doing she said I don't need your help <laughs> just like that Miss Johnson she said it just like I don't need your help and I said what are you doing she didn't want to tell me what she was doing and I said this could be this could be trouble brother buddy and she's toting this thing I said well, look, let me help you air up the tire then we couldn't get get the pump to even work and we're just pitiful you know we can't get air in the tires and I said what are you doing she goes, I got to clean out the chicken coop. Oh, good grief. Good grief. Hadn't been cleaned out in a while. I mean, it was this thick and just scooping. The corners were worse than everything. Down where you walked and everything, it was pretty good, but the corners were bad. Who, who's ever had chickens before? Raise your hand. Oh, make a mess, right? And I knew I was preaching on this text, but she didn't know I was preaching on this text. And I'm thinking, yeah, you want chickens? Well, let me tell you about chickens for a little while. They're great. I love me some good chicken eggs. Amen. And those good and bake with them, have them right there for you and sell them from time to time to people. And you're not making any money off of them. I promise you that it's not worth it in them in the, uh, if you're an entrepreneur, it's not the thing to go for, but you can get a couple a little bit of change on the side and stuff like that. Let me tell you about chickens. If you want chickens, you got to clean up behind them. I hope this isn't too vulgar for some of y'all. This might this might hurt your feelings a little bit, but they poop all over the porch. They're all over the place. So many times I get so full of the Spirit when I step right in their mess. You know what I mean? I just, I love you, April. I love you so much. You're my bride. You're my darling. I love all these birds at all. Oh, my, oh, my, no. But I like them eggs, don't I? She likes those eggs. She likes having them right there. I like that my baby's going to go out there and they got to stick their hand in there and grab them warm eggs. And I, 
They're all named, every last one of them. I wouldn't begin to tell you what their names are, but they know all their names. And they're the joy of the place. They're fun. I'll, I'll, I'll go to the car if they didn't get put up in the morning. And at 6.15, they'll follow me to the car like I've got chips or something that I'm going to drop so they can snack on them. They're just little pets. and They are. They're enjoyable. But you've got to clean up after them. We wouldn't enjoy chicken eggs. We wouldn't enjoy the joy of those chickens being on the property and our children playing with them if we said, ah, get rid of them. Shoot them all with a 22. Oh, she says, no, we wouldn't do that. That's agricultural. That's farming. We had pigs, right? You want me to go there? I'm not going to go there. That's a mess. That's a mess for sure. But you've got to deal with them every day. And now we're wanting some other animal. We've already got enough things that poop in peace, amen. <laughs> and now we've got another animal. But you know what? If we're going to get that animal, we're going to have to pay the price that it demands every day to get the what? The increase. Right? And that's the way in everything in life. You've got to realize, hey, if I want the increase of what this is that I'm maybe purchasing, buying, getting in my home, whatever it might be, I'm going to have to pay the price that it takes to maintain it and keep it up. And I'll be even, uh, we're going to get a little more spiritual as things go along. But it's even that way with your family. You want good and great children, godly children one day? Well, you've got to pay the price every single day of the week to pray with them, to love them, to nurture them, to teach them the word of God, to bring them to church. They just don't grow up with a tender heart to want to do whatever God wants them to do when they're 19 if you didn't put the price in and pay the price when they were younger, say amen. It takes investment. You've got to pay the price. You can't just say, oh, forget it. If you do say, oh, forget it, you'll have heartbreak one day. I remember as a boy, mom and dad teaching me things, especially a mother. A mother teaches so much. Dad comes in as the big hitter, right? But mom teaches you every day. And I remember the little things my mom would teach me, the craziest little things that you could ever imagine. She'd teach me. And still those things are instilled into my life. And those weren't easy things to teach. It was, it was monotonous sometimes, I'm sure, to her and laborsome. But she taught me as a little boy. And that's the same thing we do with our children. Where the oxen where there's no oxen, there's no cleanup. You don't have to deal with it. But you're not going to get the increase if you don't have oxen. See, a lot of people don't make great effort. A lot of people don't make great effort for the increase because they know what that costs. A lot of people don't make great, in, in, great effort for the increase because they know it costs something. People want to have a great church. I think sometimes we make things a little more spiritual than we ought to. Some people have the idea, well, we're just going to trust the Lord for the increase. They're still trusting the Lord. I don't know if that made sense to you all or not. They're still trusting the Lord and they're going to continue to trust the Lord. The Lord's not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. I promise you that. He won't get these tracks off this communion table and hand them out in Valdosta. I promise you he won't do it. He at least hasn't done it for me yet. Amen, church? The Lord's not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves to have this church be a great church. Now, we need the power of God. Amen? I want his spirit to rest upon us. I want the fire to fall from heaven. I want the presence of God to be thick in this place. But he's not going to do for us what we can do for ourselves. At least he hasn't done it for me yet. <laughs> i got to get up every morning and read my own Bible. How about you? I had to make it here myself. I had to get here and prepare this afternoon. I had to be here in the middle of the afternoon. I got here at about 3.15. I'm not complaining. This is what you got to do. You have to pay the price. See, a lot of people don't make the effort for the increase because they know what it costs. They really know. A lot of Christian workers, a lot of pastors, a lot of church members, they look out. Boy, I want to do that. I want to serve the Lord that way. That sound, that's what the Lord wants me to do. Mm, that's going to mess up with my, my time. It's going to mess with my evening. It's going to mess with my leftover 
time after I work. Amen, church? Is this real? Say amen. I know about it. There's a principle to understand where no oxen are, the crib is clean. There's a purpose to follow. In verse 4, where no oxen are, the crib is clean, but much increases by the strength of the ox. Someone is understood here that said, we need an ox. Our family needs to be fed. Money needs to be made. We need something to cultivate the land, to prepare the soil, to plant the seed, to get the increase. And you can't do it the right way without the ox. We have a purpose as well. We've got to go into all the world and preach the gospel. We've got to make disciples. We've got to teach people how to go into all the world and preach the gospel. That all the earth may know we've got to go with the gospel. That's our job. And there's so many different spokes, if you will, that connect back to that hub of the Great Commission. That radio station is a, is a spoke to the Great Commission. The Sunday school classes are a spoke to the Great Commission. These services are a spoke to the Great Commission. When we go to the nursing home, that's a spoke that goes to the Great Commission. Anything that we do it ought to be attached to the great purpose of going into all the world and preaching the gospel. We have a purpose. And in fulfilling that purpose, there's different spokes. There's different things that you have to do. I have a stack of cards right here. This stack of cards represents every first-time visitor that's ever come to Bemis Road Baptist Church since I've been a pastor. How about that? Isn't that neat? I think you'd want to see that. There's more than that because some people don't fill out a card. They must have thought I was ugly, so they just left it in their pew. This is all of them right here. We wouldn't have to do this. Had to get these designed. I'm just talking to you. Had to get these designed. Had to think about it and how we're going to set it up and what it's going to say and whether we're going to rip it off or not rip it off or whether it's just going to be one piece. And then we got to make sure they're always in a spot where people can grab them. And then somebody puts them in a bag. You don't know who that person is. You might. They got to be put in the bag. They got to be in the right spot so an usher can grab them and hand them to people. And then they take them out and welcomes them. And all this, all that goes into that to make a, a person that comes to church for the first time make them feel that they're loved when they come to God's house. And maybe that'll soften their heart when they hear the word preached. It'll do something in their heart. I don't know, right? Does it matter? Yes, it matters. Glory, hallelujah, it matters a lot. That's why we did it. But this takes work. One day we'll have to order more of these and get, spend a couple hundred more dollars to print a bunch of more, more of these. And we'll gladly do it. And then I'll get, I, ha, I have somebody that hands me these and they put them on my desk. And then guess what I have the opportunity to do every Monday morning? I write somebody a card. Whoever got one of these cards as a first time visitor, you got a card from me because you filled this out. Raise your hand. Look at those. Look, look, pick those hands up. I want to see them. You got one. You filled it out and it was sent to you. I'm sorry if I didn't get one to you. I don't, maybe you were one of those people that thought I was ugly. <laughs> maybe you thought I was ugly, Miss Amy. She thought I was ugly. <laughs> but but, uh, but I, you, fill out, you fill out the card Monday morning. And then, it, oh, you're busy and it's Tuesday. Oh, you got to get that feel. Oh, and I got to go here and... Then it's by Wednesday, and you got to get that to that person. You feel out. What are you talking about? It takes a little bit of work. But that little thing makes a big difference. There's little things like that that you have to do. Why? Because there's a purpose to follow. Someone's, someone has to know that that's done and follow through with it. Someone said to me, when are you going to start a bus ministry? Don't be fooled. All my heart wants to start a bus ministry. I want to go get little kids and pick them up and give them an opportunity to hear the gospel for the first time because their mommy and daddy would never bring them. I want to do that. I think God wants us to do that. You don't need a bus to do that. You can use your four on wheels to do that. 
And when I see people start bringing kids to church, to children's church and Sunday school, we'll buy a van. And then we'll buy a bus. But if you ever think I want to start a bus ministry, you're looking at them. Put the yellow buses out there. Let's bring the kids to Jesus. I'm going to tell you what, when you, that sounds exciting, and it is exciting, but that's called a lot of work. You want a bus ministry? You'll have increase, but I'm telling you, you're going to have some dirty cribs. The dirty cribs, are they worth it? Oh, yeah. If you want to help me with that, and start picking up some people by yourself, and go to places, and you bring children to, children to church on your own, if you want to help me with that, I'll help you with that, and we'll do it together. I mean it. It all, it all is a principle that keep the ox and clean the crib. My mind goes crazy sometimes. I kind of just want to whet your appetite for things a little bit tonight. I'm sitting there caroling with, with some of the church people. And I'm sitting there, brother buddy, and I'm, I'm singing these songs, and I'm thinking, you know who it is that's never probably had somebody carol to them before? Never. Now, there's widows that need carol to there's all elderly folks that need carol to yes we can continue to do that but you know who's probably never had somebody go christmas carol sing a song to them and tell them merry christmas happy new year and hug them i bet you jimmy burt has never had somebody sing christmas carols to him before but he's probably organized somebody to sing christmas carols to somebody else amen hey that'd be a great joy to go sing to pastors and Christian workers, whoa, somebody showed up at my house. I was the one doing that years ago. Well, what's that going to take? It's going to take a price. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. There's a purpose. Why do we have a jubilee? By the way, I want to make something clear. We don't have a jubilee because we have a radio station. We'd have a jubilee if we had Bemis Road Baptist Church. And we'd have one just like we're doing it. From Bemis Road Baptist Church. Just a good thing we got the radio station well, as well to make it even better. Because I have the Jubilee to encourage churches and pastors to keep going on for God. It's a fellowship to come together. I don't have the Jubilee. You might have thought that I have the Jubilee because of the radio station, but the radio station is not the end. It's the Great Commission and it's edification of the saints, is why we have the Jubilee. So pastors can come here, stay, and we put them up for a couple days, and they enjoy fellowship that they never would enjoy before to encourage pastors and preachers and full-time Christian workers. Why do we do that? To fulfill the purpose God's given us to fulfill. To encourage men that are on the forefronts to go into all the world and preach the gospel. There's a purpose that needs to be fulfilled. Number three, there's problems to be encountered. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. It's clean. Meaning if you had an ox, you would have a dirty crib. But much increase is by the strength of the ox. If you're going to, take, if you're going to accomplish anything for God and His will, you're going to encounter problems and issues. And I don't mean to sound like I'm whining. I'm just trying to be transparent. And I'm not asking anybody to fix these things that I'm talking about. If you'd like to, help yourself. <laughs> you walk down the hallway and as long as you've got a building, you're going to have lights that go out. There's a light out in the end of the hallway right before the nursery. Who saw that light that was out at the end of the nursery? Anybody see it? You don't want to raise your hand, do you? I can tell you how you'll never have any problems. I can tell you how you'll never have a dirty toilet. I can tell you how you'll never have a dirty church. I can tell you how you'll never have mint wrappers. Well, don't have mints. But you like the mints. That's increased to you, so we're going to keep the mints. I can, tell you how, I can tell you how you'll never have to vacuum in the bookstore. Don't have a bookstore. I can tell you how you'll have less, less trash around here. Have less people, have less meetings. I noticed when we had a revival, Brother Jeff, four days in a row, I said, good gracious, this place is dirty. And the Lord reminded me, that's a good thing, it's dirty. When I see trash on the ground, I don't get mad. The Lord reminds me by His Holy Spirit, praise the Lord, it's dirty. 
Praise the Lord, there's trash. Now, we ought to be respect the house of God. Amen. You understand that? And everybody that cleans this property, they're probably not going to say amen right now, but they're saying amen deep down in their soul, right? We ought to respect it. But there's always going to be problems to encounter. There's no problem-free solution. As long as you're going forward for God, there's going to be a cross to bear. There's going to be cleaning up of the ox. I wonder sometimes if God is not watching to see if we're willing to keep the ox and clean the crib and pay the price because he's worthy. I wonder if he's looking down and saying, I wonder if they're going to go the extra mile. I wonder if they're going to go a little further for me, knowing that it's going to cost them a little bit more, knowing they're going to have more problems and more frustrations. Are they going to keep on going for God? I think the Lord looks down on me sometimes, looks down on you sometimes. You say, are they going to go a little further? Because it's going to stretch them a little bit. I guess sometimes these messages like this is as much for me as they are for you. I mean, I don't want to become the guy that whines all the time. I want to be a man and man up and say, I'm going to do what it takes to get the job done no matter what. Sometimes you start, pity me, pity the preacher. I hear all these, oh, I almost said something I shouldn't have said in the pulpit. Not a real bad word, but just not something. You ought not be crude in the pulpit, amen? Michael, don't be crude in the pulpit. To be decent, like I can't, say, I can't stand somebody being crude in the pulpit. You wouldn't want somebody to be crude in your home, would you? I'd be crude in the pulpit. People use, use words in the pulpit they shouldn't use. I see people post things on Facebook about preachers, preachers preaching, preachers posting about preachers. It's almost like this. Hope I can say this right so you understand it. It's like pity us, we're preachers. We got it so bad, we're a preacher. Everybody treats us wrong, we're preachers. Who knows what I'm talking about? Maybe you don't see it because you don't got as many preacher friends as I do. And I'd like to just post one day. Wake up. Welcome to the ministry. There's no painless way to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Wake up. Go work a job. You'll get your feelings hurt there too, bucko. Amen? Go work a public job and see. And welcome to the real world where they'll cuss you. Make fun of you. And they won't treat you. Hey, all we are as God's servants is just that, God's servants. And we're going to be mistreated. And my forefathers and my heroes of the faith were martyred for Jesus Christ. Get, off, get past yourself, bucko. Oh, poor preachers. Everybody's not treating them right. Go work a job for one day of your life. You'll find out real quick what it means to be a, a real man. I'm glad I worked a public job and still work a little bit of a public job right now. It taught me a lot about real life. I don't regret that at all. That's the unconscious preparation of God in your life. But sometimes what we get in the ministry, those that really get into it, we get this unrealistic expectation that everybody's supposed to parade over us and supposed to praise us and supposed to glorify us and we're supposed to get all this sort of congratulation. We're supposed to get crowns every week for doing what we do. We don't do it for one another's praise. We do it for Jesus Christ who died on the cross for us and one day if we don't do it for other people and we do it for Him, we're going to get a crown in heaven and we'll be able to worship Him with it. Amen? We have unrealistic expectations. I start with myself. The ministry that we do, if it's for Jesus, it's right. Whether it's picking up paper, put, putting up banners, sweeping the floors, cleaning this, cleaning that, calling the sick, texting the discouraged, going to the hospital, whatever it is. A lot of those things will never be noticed by man. And who cares if they notice or not? We're doing what we do for Jesus. And we just got to say, keep the ox and clean the crib. Nobody ever told me that picking up paper was part of the ministry. They're not going to teach you that at Bob Jones and Crown College. They're not going to teach you that anywhere you go to Bible College. And pick up paper. Picking up paper is just as, much, just as important as preaching sermons. If you're not willing to pick up paper, mow the grass, or do whatever it takes, you shouldn't preach in the pulpit. I remember when I was a little boy, my dad, my dad had to, my dad had to uh, go to the go to the church away from his home and build a fire every night. He'd go all the way about 10 or 15 miles away and he had to go to the church and build the fire for Saturday night. <laughs> every single night I'd go with him. I kind of enjoyed it, you know, cuz I'm a pyromaniac, pyromaniac like Parker. And we build the fire. So what's that have to do with anything? 
Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. What if nobody, nobody cleaned this church? And nobody ever cleaned the property? What if nobody ever mowed the grass? What if nobody ever picked up the paper? Now, what if your pastor never studied for sermons? What if we never prepared in the choir? And no, everybody just got up here and started bah, 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 and singing, and they never prepared. That would be great, wouldn't it? See what I'm talking about? Somebody's got to do these things. There's a lot of things that go, go that way. And you learn in the ministry that it's for Jesus, and even the smallest things matter. I think the Lord's teaching us something. He's teaching us to keep the ox and clean the crib. Last of all, not only the problems to be encountered, but the price to be paid. We have to pay the price to keep the ox and clean the crib. Because much increases by the strength of the ox. We gotta, there's a price to be paid. What God has done for us here at Bemis Road Baptist Church is too great to lose over small little problems. What God has for you and for your future and for our future together is too great to lose over petty little problems. A lot of times, a lot of times, we see what it costs to be able to do something. We're not willing to pay the cost. And I need there's some sense in not doing some things and overtaxing yourself. I was going to do something for Christmas as a church, and I felt like it wouldn't be the right thing to do for the church at this time, and I didn't do it. And I think there is wisdom in that, but many times we see what's ahead of us, and we know there's a price to pay, but we're not willing to pay it. And so when we don't, are not willing to pay it, guess what? We don't get the increase. Sometimes I look at these buildings. Brother Buddy's been here through all this. Some of these ladies have been here through all this. Sometimes I look at these buildings. And I thought, H.C. Godfrey was a project manager and a pastor. <laughs> he had to figure out how to get all this paid for, build all these buildings. And now we're reaping all the benefits of a man 50 years ago. He wasn't a lazy man, I promise you. He looked into it and he saw, boy, it's going to be a lot of work, but we need it. We need it for God's glory. And he said, boy, I'm going to have some dirty cribs. I'm going to have some mess to clean up. I'm going to deal with a lot of junk. I'm willing to pay the price for the glory of God. It all sounds fun and exciting. Let's have a building project. Wait till you get in one. And I haven't even been in one, but I know good and well that's a lot of work. You understand what I'm saying? We have to, have to, we have to, we have to count the costs. Somebody, some people think, some people think that I work hard. <laughs> I'm telling you what, I don't work that hard. Not compared to some heroes of my faith. I think of my dad, how hard he works. I think of my heroes. I think of guys like H.C. Godfrey that put this all up. And I mean, they brought this church from nothing. You understand that? From nothing. H.C. Godfrey and Miss Ada, I remember talking to them in their living room. They went from door to door to door to door, just knocking doors one right after another when they first came to Valdosta and just blazed these streets with the gospel and got other people to help them as well. But they went with them and they went everywhere, door knocking and witnessing and trying to, trying to get people saved to start Bemis Road Baptist Church. They said, yeah, it's going to take hard work, but we want the increase. I think you want your increase in this church. I think you want your increase in your family. I think you want your increase in your spiritual life. You got to pay the price. We're not, all churches aren't the same and all Christians aren't the same. I'm looking at all kinds of different Christians here. Say we're all saved but we're all different. You'll be somebody different as a Christian next year this time by the price you pay to put into your Christian life, you can be a different Christian and a better Christian and grow in grace. By the time that you put in the Word of God this year, by the time you put in prayer, you can be so much better than what you are right now by the price you put in day by day and week by week. Amen? You can have a better family. Your children can be better. Your life as a family can be better by the price that you pay to just get that increase. There's a price to be paid to have a great church. I think we have a wonderful church. I think we have a wonderful church. If you're thankful for your church, say amen. amen. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for you and the price that you pay. But I hope I never stand here before you and say, I'm satisfied. No, I still want to do more. I know you're scared. 
and say, Brother Justin, with God's help, this next year, we're just going to do more. We're going to keep the ox and clean the crib. We're going to go on for God. Will I get in there with you? I hope that I will. And I trust that I will. But I need some people that will say, I'll clean the crib. I'll do the dirty things. I'll do the necessary things to let the church go on successful. Let the church go on prosperous in the years to come. There's a price to be paid. I think all of us want the product without the process. We want the product without the process. We want the increase, but we don't want to deal with the dirty cribs of the ox. I think we all want the chicken eggs, but we don't want on a Saturday morning to clean up the chicken coop, clean up the mess, wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow she brought out there, just mess. How about that? I think we all want a great Christian life, but there's a price to be paid. I think we all want a great church, but there's a price to be paid. We've got to pay the price. And get on our knees and clean up the messes sometimes. And I'm not just thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking all along, just pay the price. So we say together tonight, as I've just kind of talked to you a little bit, we say together tonight as a family, as a church, this is a family, this is a church, we say together tonight, we're going to keep the ox and clean the crib. Because we want the increase. If you're confused, the increase is souls saved. The increase is families changed. The increase is lives added to the ministry. Laborers added. Keep the ox and clean the crib because we want God. We want God's increase. Last year this time, there was 30 people here on Sunday morning. 30 to 35 we averaged. And right now we've got more. And it's not all about numbers, but right now we've got more. We've been averaging about 50 to 55 on Sunday morning. More like 50, probably closer to 50. But as we increase, we add more people, guess what? There'll be more problems. There'll be more issues as we go forward. You add another ministry next year, guess what? Add another ministry in the next year. Somebody else takes it on. It'll be an increase, but there'll be a price to be paid. So you have to realize that. Are you willing to pay the price because Jesus is worthy as you move forward for him. Let's keep the ox and clean the crib. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Let's stand together.